Rebecca. Hey, Brittany. <laughs> So today we're doing something a little bit different with our unboxings. I like it. We've showcased a lot of, you know, individual minerals and things like that. But what about all the minerals that happen to form together in oh. certain places? So you're going to be unboxing and I'm going to tell you about what's inside. I like it. We got a box. We do. This is probably quite the interesting one. Ooh, I like it. Oh my goodness. Look at that. So what do you think we've got here? I don't know. The first thing that came to my mind was like a distorted wizard's hat or some <laughs> like Jack and the Beanstalk fairy tale type mm -hmm. thing. It looks very organic. You've got a lot of what I'm guessing are botryoidal formations or a little close. Like these spherical. You know, it's funny because the green, more mossy, pea like looking things mm -hmm. are not the same, obviously, as the light pink but they do form kind of similarly. So all of the kind of like botryoidal masses, which are more kind of like radial than other botryoidal stuff, although it's kind of like fuzzy a little bit yeah, as well. Yeah, I'm like, can I touch it? It's not more- It doesn't feel fuzzy. No. no so it looks it, like it. Yes, it definitely looks fuzzy. Those green peas and- <laughs> There's actually white encrustings on yes. there as well. Those are also the same exact mineral. So that is grutite and it is a manganese oxide. Out of the minerals that are currently on the specimen, we have grutite. This whole entire base is, is actually the quartz. And I think it's actually a stalactite, a quartz stalactite with the druzy quartz along the base. There are these really thin white crystals. That is the laumontite. It's a hydrated calcium aluminum silicate and grutite likes to form with zeolites, which laumontite is a type of zeolite, which mm. is pretty interesting. So we've talked about zeolites before on the channel. Can you yes. remind us what a zeolite is? So a zeolite is a mineral that typically has aluminum and silicon compounds in its chemical composition. And then we have these bigger kind of like somewhat clearish crystals down here and that is calcite. Ah, this creeps me out. I think it's kind of creepy looking, don't you oh, think? When I first saw it, I was like, what is going on here? This is from the Malad Quarry in India. This one's kind of neat, one, because it has the Druzy Quartz kind of like growing along the side, but along the top, you can kind of see kind of channels mm. from that kind of like broke off a little bit. And then if you look directly head on, it kind of has the general crystalline shape for quartz, kind of like those three sides. Right. Which is pretty interesting because most stalactites, like when they form, are bubbled in shape from the water coming down it, but the way how this formed, which is probably in the more dry setting, okay. it was able to maintain some of its crystalline shape. It is kind of neat, creepy, but really cool. Are you ready for the next one? I'm ready. So as far as the ones that we're going to see today, I think this is my favorite color combination. Oh, okay, I like that. Oh my goodness, look at that. Isn't that it, pretty? It's so pretty. So we have at least four different minerals that are going on here. I guess we can start with kind of like these giant green prismatic clusters that are on the specimen. So those are atacomite. Atacomite is a copper to chloride hydroxide. So there's these giant clusters. Well, there's also a lot of these tiny, somewhat also fuzzy spherical clusters that are here. If you see like those really tiny balls, the ones that are more fuzzy in appearance. I gotcha. Those are libenthite. It's a copper to phosphate hydroxide. Oh my gosh. That is the cutest. I believe this piece came from the La Farola mine in Chile. A lot of the minerals that are on here have copper in its chemical composition. Here's this assortment of minerals that can form from one certain kind of element. So the base of this specimen, kind of see how it's kind of like waxy mm -hmm. and luster, a little bit bubbly mm -hmm. in appearance? That's actually pseudo-malachite. Oh, cool. So pseudo-malachite, somewhat similar as the name suggests, is not actually malachite. So pseudo-malachite is a copper phosphate hydroxide and malachite is a copper carbonate hydroxide. It's a little tricksy there because of the name of how it likes to look like malachite a lot, but it's more 
kind of like in encrustings more so than malachite can form in like kind of like giant masses uh, occasionally. And then the final mineral, which I think the front side showcases a little bit better. So you kind of see like these tiny, like somewhat light greenish to these white, very, very tiny spheres on mm -hmm. this piece. That would be haloisite. So haloisite is an aluminosilicate, kind of like clay mineral. In this particular piece, it's more of just kind of like an accessory mineral. Obviously we're talking about gem combos. Mm -hmm. And when you have a combination of anything in earth, it's because it is conducive to growing together. And like mm -hmm. Brittany said, there's a lot of copper there. And a lot of gem formation, whether it's a single gem material or a combination of materials, mm -hmm. happens because the right ingredients are together at the right time with the right conditions. It makes sense that if you had a combo material that had similar elements required for the formation, mm -hmm. that, that some of these things could form together. But it's cool because you know that certain things were happening here that weren't happening here, that weren't happening here. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's where the fun shapes and formations can really come into play. I just love how prismatic the acanthite is on this piece. It's just, it's just very nice. It's like the surface of the earth there in the sense that you have, you know, a base, but then you have a lot of things actually coming out from it. You're ready for the next piece? I'm ready. <gasps> oh, oh yes, that's this is a good cool. One Ooh, it's dense. It is quite dense. Cool, okay, so we've got some metallic ness mm -hmm. going on. Definitely do. It first reminded me of food. I don't know why, and I don't even really know what, but that There's like, a couple it was like a could tuna be steak, like a weird looking tuna steak or something. Tuna steak. I, I could know, see like, you like a weird poppy seed, kind of like muffin or like- Very strange muffin. A cupcake. Here are the three main things that I see. The mm. orange material, the, mm. the light pinkish whitish material, and this metallic dark charcoal material. A lot of, these minerals are based off of the element zinc. So this particular specimen came from the Sterling Hill mine in New Jersey. It's like an yeah. aggregate. It's like it was kind all of. like mushed together and if you did a cross section, it would all be in there. There's at least four different minerals on this particular specimen. This orange rind that we have here as well as kind of like the, like the veining that we kind of yeah. see here. That is zincite, the pepper, of <laughs> the mineral with all of, like those really dark minerals. That is Franklinite. Named, I'm assuming, after the Franklin mine in New Jersey. Yep, those kind of like light pink minerals that are on there. Those are actually Williamite. And then kind of like the whole base with the white matrix mineral, that is calcite. Okay. Yeah, so we have a lot of zinc minerals in the calcite matrix. Cool, I like is, the veining. Oh yeah, the veining's pretty cool, especially like how it pops out from the different colors. Yeah. The reason why it's so heavy is because of the zinc that's, there, there's a lot of zinc going on in this particular piece. Not only does this entire piece just have a lot of zinc in general, but zinc side has a specific gravity of 5.6. Okay, so that's a, that's a big boy. It's pretty hefty, hefty boy. It's pretty hefty. Uh -huh. One thing worth noting is in a lot of combos, we're seeing calcite. Calcite, which is calcium carbonate, mm -hmm. has pretty abundant materials in it. I, I would say if if you're comparing, you know, a lot of these minerals and elements to Mother Earth's kitchen pantry, the flour was like silicates, so like quartz, and then sugar would probably be calcium. So you'll have a lot of calcite. Those are kind of like the main two that you'll find in a lot of specimens in general, just because there's just an abundance of those elements that you can find, especially near the Earth's crust. Okie dokie. <gasps> Ooh, that's fun. That's like a New Year's Eve mineral. <laughs> a lot of metallics. We do have a lot of metallics. Like here. golds, charcoal, silvers, lots of iridescent colors. Okay, what is that one? So the metallic that you're seeing there is actually pyrite. That's not the typical pyrite color that you see because it has that iridescence to it. Yeah, I'm not as quite familiar as to why this has just 
more iridescence overall than most pyrite that you'll see. They're also not perfect cubes either. Right. They're, they're very kind of like choppy. You have the striations, but definitely not the cubic form. Perhaps just where this piece came from, there could have just happened to be like some extra bits that caused the pyrite to have some like iridescence on like the outer layer of it. There are a few other minerals on this piece. So the kind of somewhat bigger colorless pieces, I think the one that you're looking at right now yeah. is fluorite. I was gonna say, I saw the cleavage plane, so yes. I knew it had to be something with cleavage. Yes, but colorless fluorite, which is super rare. Super rare. So there's a lot of like small scattered fluorites in this piece, but there's also scattered calcite in this piece, but those scattered calcite are kind of like rhombuses, but at the end of those rhombus tips, they're very spiky. Yeah, I, which I is see really that. Neat. And then the overall base of, I guess you could say more of the matrix of this yeah. is dolomite. Dolomite, okay. Yes. A lot of the dolomite that's in here are very small pieces that are formed and are just kind of going in every which way direction. And then kind of like at the bottom, of here, we kind of like have this darker gray yeah. metallic mineral, which wasn't able to get to the bottom of it, but I think it could have been galena just because galena and pyrite often form together. In what condition does this form? Do we know anything about where it's found or the, the type of formation that occurred here? I wasn't able to find the exact mine where this piece came from, but it did come from Mexico. These particular minerals to like form together, I think was more so in a hydrothermal deposit. As I said, the main kind of like mineral of this whole piece is dolomite and dolomite is a common mineral in hydrothermal veins. So we have at least two to three minerals that the dolomite uh, has an association with and it's found on this piece. When, you know, trying to figure out, you know, where minerals and things came from, like if you don't have like the exact location, just putting clues together, kind of like puzzle pieces in a way, just see like if you can get the whole picture as to what happened here. Well, forensic gemologist, geologist here. You ready for the next box? I'm ready. <laughs> Oh, I like that one. I know that that is fluorite. Absolutely. Maybe muscovite? Yeah, that's muscovite. Shoral? Shoral, yep. The last one is a feldspar orthoclase. Cool. I mean, the first thing I thought of was like the zoning. At first glance, you, you mainly just see the green, which is more so kind of like in the core. In these cubo-octahedral fluorites, there is some bits of purple fluorite on like the same exact pieces. We have both kind of like green to colorless to ever so slightly purple color zoning on these fluorites. So this piece is from the Arango Mountains in Namibia. Oh, cool. Not only is like the fluorite pretty cool, but I actually really like the muscovite and then just like the piece of shoral that's kind of like almost like the base core of the piece. Yeah. It's pretty nice. We got, you know, several different colors going on. Very cool. I love that, Brittany. I'm glad you have enjoyed all of these pieces. Well, somebody did actually tip me off to a little bit of the theme. Oh. So I, I actually do have one box for you. <gasps> a box for me? A box for you. Ooh. All right, it's somewhat of a big box, a little heavy, okay. That's that's really cool. There's obviously at least three different minerals here, but it's almost like here's this piece, here's this piece, and then mm -hmm. here's this other mineral. So we have this lovely green fluoride that's here. I really like this green fluoride because its color is kind of like more dispersed through it instead of like being having like hard section like color zoning. I'm not quite sure yet what the white mineral might be, but I like how it kind of encrusts over the fluorite, but also if you look at it from this particular angle, you can see kind of like the layering of mm -hmm. the mineral as it grew on the fluorite. And I like seeing those layers. And then this darker, but also like brown mineral, it's either hexagonal or trigonal. 
I mean, it looks a lot like quartz, but like a quartz that's just gone through a lot as it was trying to grow. Okay, so this piece is from China. It is fluoride, as you correctly uh. noticed. The white layer is calcite, then this material is quartz. And a really interesting element of what's going on with the quartz is it appears to be heavily iron stained. So you can see mm -hmm. a little bit on the calcite right here, it's the orangish material. You can see a little bit at the top as well. The iron layer is actually pretty thick. So you can see there are little patches throughout the quartz where you can see that it is more of like a, that smoky quartz color. It has mm -hmm. like that brownish grayish color. Another element of these gem combos is the aesthetic element, right? So Absolutely. in the first one that we unboxed, you have that, you know, nice, tall, it, it gradually gets a little bit thinner towards the top. We said it reminds us of a wizard's hat or a wizard's wand or Jack and the Beanstalk or, or something. This one kind of does that for me in the sense that it feels like it could have some sort of personality or animation to it. I first thought of like like a Pokemon or something. <laughs> Fluorite, not particularly expensive in a lot of forms. Calcite and quartz, also not that expensive. But when you have these combinations or these interesting shapes and designs that elicit some sort of response from us, yeah. they can become much more interesting specimen. So that's another way that you have nice contrast in color and shape and luster. And it really just makes for, I think, a super fun piece. Oh, absolutely. I like just like the stark differences in each piece, even though that they're all together. Yes. It's really nice. Well, thanks for showing me all of these. That was really fun. And of course, we always pick our favorite for a closer look. I, I know what mine is. I hope it's not the same choice that I have. So I think we're gonna have to go with this lovely copper piece. Was this also your choice? It was not. Oh, thank that one's goodness, awesome. this is all for me. Oh, yes. It's awesome, but I have a different one. Mine is oh. the, the metallic, just because right. I, you know, aesthetically it's probably not my favorite piece, but from a materials perspective, the colorless fluorite, the very interesting pyrite. Mm -hmm. And again, when I looked at it with the loop, it just had a world waiting to be discovered. It, so it's really cool under the loop. Yeah. Take a closer look. Thanks so much for showing me all these gem combos. It was really fun, super unique episode. So I hope you all enjoyed it too. Yes, I'm, I'm glad you really enjoyed these. I spent a lot of good time like trying to see like what are all of these minerals and kind of like how and maybe why they form together. Yes, let us know in the comments which one was your favorite. And don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.